Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone people. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all for checking this one out. So, tomorrow, 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 West Indies and England, they will do battle in the third and final ODI game of the series. Now, <laughs> it's going to be very interesting, my people, because both teams will be going for the win. The series is now locked at one apiece and as you can imagine they will definitely want to see if they can win the series now england they have a young team that is uh, coming together right and west indies as usual you know we always have a young team and we always turn in the corner but with the squad that we have you know we showed especially in the first odi that we can you know get the job done the batsmen, they showed in the second ODI that they can also hold their own. You know, it's just that, generally speaking, rarely are we able to put together an entire game. It's either the batting will click or the bowling will click. But rarely, we have a case where both batting and bowling click at the same time. Now, going into this final game tomorrow, I have my plane 11 and batting order here. You understand? Um, I just going to make probably one or two changes from the last game. It's not like uh, it's it going to make any major difference because the squad that we are selecting from you know, is basically the same set of players that we have had for a period of time. So going into the game, I am opening with um, Evan Lewis and Brandon King. You understand? Evan Lewis didn't come off for him in the second um, game but we saw what he did in the first ODI and we also saw him in the T20s so Evan Lewis you know I'm hoping that he will have a good day you know once Evan Lewis um, bats 20-25 overs you know your, your team will probably be in a good place once you're not losing wickets rapidly from the other end so going with Evan Lewis uh, Brandon King right he has looked positive in the first couple of balls and then you know he just plays a, a reckless shot careless shot playing away from his body mostly and getting out caught but you know him coming back into the squad i am still going with him as an opener i don't have any other opener in the team right in the squad i don't have any other opener that i that i'm going to work with because obviously she hope is batting at number four so um and the next thing is i want to bring joel and join the team so much but I wanted to bring him in the middle order. But based on how the middle order performed in the in the last game, I still I, I don't want to pull out. I don't want to go and, go and miss with the middle order. You understand? <laughs> I don't want to mess with the middle order like that. So I'm going to go Brandon King and Evan Lewis at the top. Number three, we go Casey Carty. Once again, showing the, um, all the ability in the world. You understand? Um, he got 70 odd in the first game. Well, in the second game, when he looked to turn up the ante, you understand he was um, dismissed but I am back in um, Casey Carty to go out there and play a mature innings again you understand um, so Casey Carty would come in at number three in this game that we have um, coming up you understand um, number four obviously Captain She Hope She Hope will go in will, will bat at number four you know he got a brilliant century in the second game you know, his 17th ODI century. You know, generally speaking, when she hope but most of the innings, we usually put together a respectable total. Not all the time we're going to end up winning the game, but generally speaking, when he bats through, you know, we, we usually put something up that is decent. And, you know, the game will be played in his backyard. Um, we, are, we are in Barbados for this one tomorrow. So, obviously, she hope is there. Number four. Number five. Um, Sheffield Rutherford, four consecutive half centuries. Really good to see him coming in and holding his own. You know, we are looking for that um, century pretty soon, but we have to understand that batting at number five 
you know sometimes it's going to be a risky game especially if you if your team already got off to a good start and you just want to come and push along you understand you are going to be playing shots that you'll probably you can probably call them risky you know so not all the time a number five number six batsman will be able to score um convert all the 50s you know from a personal perspective you would definitely want him to get um, a century under his belt or get a couple of centuries but looking at it from the team's point of view you know sometimes when you come in and you get a 50 or a 30 or a 40 yard balls you know you really work out well for the team so um Sheffield Rutherford comes in at number five number six um Sherman Hetmyers almost the same sort of thing um that I just said about um Rutherford if your team is batting um well and you're coming in the last 15 10 overs then you know you're gonna look to go look to score a quick 50 60 you understand obvious if you can get a century in that time it would be good but you know you, your job is to um close out the innings continue the momentum you understand five six um six seven sometimes you know you're the last recognized batsman there so your job is to come um hold things together if we are not doing so well um, if we got off to a good start, your thing is to come, you know, apply the pressure and, and close the innings out. If it's a whole lot of overs that you don't want to trust the, the last no, um, three batsmen with, then you know you can you can stay there and, 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 and shepherd them. But Hetmeyer comes in at number six in my team. Um, Raston Chase, we haven't really gotten a lot from him with the bat just yet. But, you know, we definitely need him with those economical overs. You understand um in his backyard also so one would hope that he will pick up some wickets today and will get some runs but there is is um how economical he, he is we definitely want that so he will come in at number seven matthew ford matthew ford picked up three wickets in the last game um you know not express pace not express pace but using using his skill set pretty well you understand and he got three wicket for us so he's in um we also have goody kishmoti goody kishmoti he wasn't at his brilliant best in the last game not all games players will be able to you know um pro produce at the highest level so moti will come in there at number what's that number nine um we have alzari joseph i'm bringing in back alzari joseph you understand rotating between our seamers it's almost um you know it's 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 rough because at the end of the day they are being expensive and you know you still want to give them time to settle in and to try and win but the fact that we gave Alzari Joseph a rest in the second game I'm gonna bring him back in in this decider you know being a senior player being a um in Barbados there you know we're gonna we're gonna look for him to, to work up his pace and you know we are hoping that he will pick up some wickets and not be too expensive so I am putting him in place of um, of Shamar Joseph you understand and I know it's counterproductive to be putting people in and taking them out but you know just looking at how I am setting up this team um, that's how I are going I'm going to do it right here right and you know and and then we you know alzari joseph and Jaden seals so that's basically how we're going to do it seals was expensive in the last game also you know but we are hoping he will find a little form like he did in the um what was it the first odi so we will keep him in um too uh so we probably do, we don't want to run into the same problem that we had the last game trying to find a six bowler but you don't we don't want to go one batting short um, the, probably the, the only other thing I, I could think to do is to um, bring in Romario Shepard, you understand, as the next bowler. Use, um, no, I'm not even going to do that. I need the two spinners. So, a brother for it, probably going to just have to bowl a couple more overs. You know, Carty, Carty is an is a established bowler. You know, we probably don't want to bowl him in certain um, parts of, of the game. You understand? You probably want to bowl him when the field is spread. Try and slide in a couple overs. You know, or ask Rutherford to bowl a couple more. You know, really want um, Shepard to play. But, you know, um, I have Matthew Ford pro producing. And I need the two out and out seamers. So I'm not going to play one out and out seamer and then Shepard. I need the two out and out seamers plus Ford. You understand? So that's, that's the problem why I'm not bringing in 
um, Shepard into this game. So that's going to be my playing 11, my people. So I am basically going with almost the same 11. I don't want to mess up with, I don't want to mess around with the batting. The batting didn't do too badly in the second game. So obviously, I'm not going, I'm going, I'm not going to uh, mess up with, mess, mess with the batting. You know, Bernard King didn't fire. But you know, I don't have another uh, established opener to throw him in there, so I'm going to just go with that same um, unit that has been working for us over the last couple of games. Um, King and, and, and Lewis at the top there, you understand? And then I leave the, the rest of the middle order Carty, Hope, Brother Ford, Hetty. You know, and as I said, I need Chase, I need the overs there from Chase. So the team almost picks itself, my people. I'm not playing, I'm not going to play Hayden Walsh Jr. You know, wanted to play Joel Andrew. But Rutherford and Hetmeyer are looking good in, in the middle there. Casey Carty looking good. So there's no way he gets in. And I'm not going to throw him in as an opener. You understand? So um, that is how I pick in my plane 11, my people. Let me know what you all think. And feel free to share your plane 11 in the comment section. Big up.